Dear Jeff, Andy, and Jen, I'm so blessed to have you, three children, and my adorable 11 grandchildren in my life. Last December reinforced how truly lucky I am. I remember all too well that day, the week before Christmas, where I lay in the emergency room. The doctor had just told me I was having a heart attack. He turned to your dad and asked, Do you have children? Your dad answered, Yes, three. The doctor then replied, You need to call them now. That's when it hit me. This is really happening. But wait, I'm a baby boomer. We're too young for heart attacks. Yes, heart disease runs in our family, but your grandparents are 85 and 87, and they've never had a heart attack. Plus, I knew the symptoms, crushing feeling in the chest, pain radiating down the left arm, sweating and nausea. I had none of those. This was more like a severe asthma attack. Despite my denial, quick action by the hospital staff resulted in minimal permanent damage to my heart. Three stents later, I've learned a lot, and I'm not keeping it to myself. Jeff and Andy, take those meds for high blood pressure. You are at risk. Jeff, Jen, and Andy, all three of you, watch your diet and exercise more. Cut down on the fat. Try to eat more whole grains. Jen, especially you, know that heart symptoms in women can be very different from men. That funny feeling in your chest, that shortness of breath, get it checked out. As parents yourself now, you hope your children learn from your mistakes. While my heart attack wasn't exactly a mistake, it was a wake-up call. I hope you are able to learn from my heart attack, just as I have, and make changes and get educated so you will live a long and healthy life. My 11 grandchildren are counting on you. Love, Mom. My dearest Sophie and Millie, the Lord has blessed me in so many ways. I have found my soulmate, best friend, confidant, and hero in your father. Our deep love for each other has given us the two of you. This has truly been a year filled with miracles and one that I will never forget. As I write this letter, it's a story to me as much as it is to the two of you. I had gotten sick at the gym one night in March. This was a different kind of sickness, though. When I came home, you two were already in bed, so I went to bed too. The next morning was my birthday. I was 31 years old. I thought I would feel better after getting some sleep, but when my alarm went off, I couldn't even lift my arm to shut it off. I had a very bad headache and was very weak. Daddy took me to the ER, but I couldn't understand what he was saying or talk to him on the way. At the hospital, the doctor said I had a stroke because the arteries in my neck had some tears and leaks in them. I wasn't getting enough blood in my brain. One neat thing was that I got to ride in an ambulance and a helicopter. You would have liked that. I was so sick that time that I was on my way to heaven to meet God. On my way there, though, God decided to keep me here with you two girls and your daddy. I was happy I was getting better, but I couldn't pick you up for a month, and that made me really sad. Since then, I have been sharing my story with other mommies to teach them about stroke so they can watch their little girls grow up, too. I even helped start a group so stroke survivors like me can get together. Whatever happens, know that our family is blessed. We are blessed with our faith, we are blessed with our love for each other, and we are blessed to have more time together. I love you girls more than you will ever know. Mommy. Dear Davin, I am truly blessed to have you as my nephew. I still remember the day you were born. I'd never seen your mom happier than the moment she held you in her arms for the very first time. In your baby book, she wrote, I am determined to give you everything and anything possible. I am always here for you. I can't imagine life without you. You're only three now, about to turn four, and I know that one day you will wonder what your mommy was like. Even though she's in heaven, I promise to do my best to make sure you grow up knowing her and how much she loved you. One of your mom's favorite things to do was update her Facebook status. I know you don't know what Facebook is yet, but one day you will. The day your mom passed away, she changed her status to eating lunch with Davin. He loves his smiley face pancakes. 
Times with your kids are so great. And that she was in Fremont at the grocery store and she called to see um, what she needed to buy to make chicken enchiladas. And we talked, discussed meeting. We were supposed to meet the next day so I could find out where her daycare was going to be because I picked up her son from daycare. And then, and then that was the phone call. And then about two hours later, I got a strange phone call. Um, and I didn't recognize it, so I didn't answer it. And they left a voicemail. And so I checked right away, and it was the Fremont Police Department. And I called right back, and they said I needed to get to Fremont to the hospital to pick up my grandson. And that Marcy had called the ambulance for herself. So she'd had a, like a cold rush come over her and felt all tingly and had severe chest pains. And um, she was in high anxiety when they got to the hospital, take these clothes off, she just, you know, and they um, did a test on her that showed that she'd had a heart attack at some time. And they were just surprised, she's only 25. And uh, then sometime, Shortly thereafter, she went into cardiac arrest where they had to do the um, shocks. And there was another something, oh, that she wanted to see me before she left for Omaha. But I was too far out. I was still another hour. My mom just told me that Mars, she didn't know what was going on, but she got a phone call that she needed to go to Fremont Hospital to pick up my nephew because something happened to my sister. And I remember sitting on the floor um, painting my fingernails and I was thinking what am I doing my sister could be dying and I'm just sitting here wasting time and so we waited probably two and a half hours till my mom got to Omaha and then we went to the hospital we went to the front desk told them we're here for Marcy Reeg where is she and um, I remember she said hang on a second I have to call the chaplain the chaplain at that moment didn't really make it sound serious to us until he went to get like the doctor. They came back and I think it was then when it really seemed serious and he said the doctor was kind of like it's not it's not good. We're not getting a blood pressure. She hasn't had a blood pressure in over 30 minutes. She hasn't had blood flow, just things like that. So then the nurse came in and she asked us if we wanted she was gonna bring us in to go see her while they were in the cath lab and uh, that was kind of the point where I was like okay while we were walking in there I was like mom you know they're having us go in there because they probably don't think she'll make it and they want us to see her while she's living and be able to talk to her so I remember going in there and I would open the door and I was hoping to see somebody else that wouldn't be her But it was her, and we just stood there, and we talked to her and told her we loved her, and brushed her hair, and we said just to keep fighting. Then my mom said, "What? Wh at what point do you guys stop trying? At what point do you just stop? And they kind of said, well, it's probably not going to be too much longer till we stop. The doctor came out, and he said that they stopped and that she was gone and at, then we just broke down even more. As you're walking out that door you don't quite comprehend that that's the very last time you're gonna see her. And so people would call her cell phone to listen to her voicemail just to hear her voice and I had it and so it was th like three and a half weeks later the day of my final I told myself when I pass I'm gonna call her and tell her that I passed and so when I got my grade I waited till I was not by anybody and I called her for the first time and I told her that I passed. So you could have a daughter, a wife, it could be you. you. You know, you need to recognize signs of heart disease, that it does happen in women, and it may not be your traditional well known signs in the fifty year old male, you know. Um, and it does happen, and I just can't stress that enough, and that people need to wake up and pay attention and be aware. And 
I mean, we lost someone really special to us, and with research and with the American Heart Association, it can help prevent it from ever happening to other families, and there's always going to need more research. It's probably, it's not enough now, so we just always need more, always so that mm -hmm. nobody has to feel how we feel. Right after she had died, everybody started referring to her and explaining to him that she had to go be an angel. That's how we can explained it to him it's that she's an angel and so now mm -hmm. up in the sky and for while it was real new in his mind he I think he still does it sometimes where um, he would go outside and wave in the sky and tell his mom hi and bye and in the mornings he would wake up and he would ask to go outside and wave so that's what he would always do is go outside and wave and I think he does it sometimes now but it's not as often and for Mother's Day this year he um, put release balloons in the sky for her so he knows she's there when I first went back to her house after she had passed away she sometime was preparing for him to come and had bought him a new outfit and it was all folded up nice and neat with the shoes on top on his bed he never got it I kept it it was her last it's in her my little memory box so Davin, your mom was so determined to give you everything possible, she worked two jobs and still always made time for you. Sometimes she would lay with you while you slept just so she could spend even more time with you. You and your mommy loved each other very much. Both of you always said, I love you as big as a barn. One of your mom's favorite songs was called Dream Big. Davin, like this song says, when you dream, Dream big, and always remember that your mommy loves you as big as a barn. Love, Aunt Mandy. <laughs>